Oh, am I in trouble? <laughs> no. I mean, I realize we haven't had a lot of good news to talk about lately. But tonight, I have got a terrific surprise. Oh, oh, no, 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 stop, stop. Forget what I said about helping you pack. You probably would just misconstrue that as my trying to interfere with your life, let alone your clothes. Look, would you cut out the sarcasm? Yes. If you promise to stop being unreasonable. Unreasonable? Did you or did you not talk to Joe about getting a new job for me? Yes. All right. I that is meddling. It's as simple as that. Didn't you tell me that you were unhappy, you felt restless, you wanted to do something else? Look, I am perfectly capable of getting something else on my own. Paul, don't you think I know that? Look, I don't want a handout from you or Joe Riley or anyone else. A handout? This is becoming more ridiculous by the minute. Paul, I can hardly consider a job as an investigative reporter a handout. Furthermore, despite what power you think I have at the banner, Joe makes his own decisions. I mean, I can suggest things, but his decisions are his own. Mm -hmm. And so you suggested to him that he make room on his staff to tie me to Lord Enterprises. Paul, that really is a very arrogant statement. It makes me feel that you consider my career as a meddler foremost over my career as a businesswoman. And we've worked together too long for you to make that kind of mistake. Now, Joe Riley happens to think that you would make a wonderful investigative reporter. So do I. Do you think that you can stop thinking about the fact that the job comes from me and just think about the job? All right. So you want me to give up my cushy office job, huh, and go out in the street so I can be a crusader again, huh? Well, you have to admit that your experience as an undercover agent would certainly help. Paul, I, I, I mean, you're an intelligent man. You're a very gifted writer. I think you'd be absolutely perfect for this job. Maybe. What's wrong? Are you afraid of the challenge? I've never backed off from a challenge in my life. I know that. I mean, none of these things would have happened if I hadn't come to land you. 
Yeah, sure. You say you were talking to Vicky and she suddenly collapsed. What in the world were you talking about? Larry, it, it seems Nikki Smith has resurfaced. I guess she's ashamed of her past. 
Uh, it's understandable. She felt her parents had rejected her. Hmm. You always have this feeling that she never liked herself very much. And that makes a lot of sense. Now, it's really fascinating. But, um... <clears throat> did uh, the two of you, uh, keep in touch over the years? No, I lost touch with her when I left the foster home. I, I didn't know she lived in Landview until I saw her name on the woman's page of the banner. Oh, oh. oh and now she's working for that awful chronicle. Oh. Oh, you know, I wish she and Joe had gotten along better. Well, someday she's going to have to learn what I did. But all the ambitions in the world are no substitute for a secure feeling. And that has to come from within. But if she had someone to love, and to love her, help. And look what loving you has done for me. <laughs> yeah, it could fit your entire life. That's right, but I wouldn't have it any other way. You understand that, don't you? I wouldn't be if I didn't. You know, in so many ways, we're so right for each other. I, I keep daydreaming about this endless romantic future with you. Really? You don't strike me as the kind of person who would daydream about an endless romantic future. Well, usually I'm not. But in your case, I have to force myself not to think about it. Oh, yeah. Stop forcing yourself. Because I don't mind at all. I don't believe it, Joe. It can't be true. I've been saying that to myself for weeks, but something always happens to corroborate the fact that Vicki Smith is back. But, but Vicki obviously loves Tina very much. It's just incredible to think that subconsciously she'd have this, this, this resentment toward her. You know, I don't... Wait a minute. You know, when, when Tina was hit by the car, she was in the hospital, and Vicky was going to come to see her, Tina was practically hysterical. She didn't want to see Vicky. She didn't want her visiting her in a room or anything. And I told Vicky about it. Vicky had, had no idea why Tina would feel this way. Vicky never remembers you know that. Yeah, I know. Joe, even if, if, if Nikki Smith did return, I mean, I, I just don't believe that Nikki would have killed Marco. Yeah. I know, I understand. It's, it's hard to believe. I mean, Nikki Smith always talked about, about getting Vicky, but she was never violent. No. See, now why she's unconscious and why she stays that way, she wants to be. I'm going to call an ambulance, Joe. I want her hospitalized as a precautionary measure. I just hope when she comes to us, she comes to us, Vicky. Life to Live will continue in a moment. A divorce? Yeah. Has that caught you mind? No. And I can't believe that you would think that it has. Well, well. A few months ago, I couldn't believe anything could ever come between us. And my old buddy, Jack Scott, came to town. Remember how I used to try to get you to like him? When we talked about Jack, I thought I made it clear that I considered it a passing infatuation, schoolgirl stuff, and that it was you that I loved and you that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. If you only knew how much I wanted to believe that. Then why are you sitting here talking about a divorce? When I'm certainly not thinking about it. Yeah, but you are thinking about Jack Scott, aren't you? And with him between us, where are we? I told you, it will pass. But it has. There's no guarantee that it will. Well, I'm sure that it will. But obviously, if you're talking about divorce, you do not have any trust in our love 
for all the years that we have spent together. Oh, uh, uh, well, well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. All, all right, all right. Maybe, maybe there has been something that's been gnawing in my gut now for a long time, and maybe now is the time to get it out of you. Yes, please do. When you came back from the Caribbean, I really didn't ask you anything about that trip, did I? And you didn't really say anything about it, but now I'm going to ask you. Did anything happen between you and Jack Scott? Oh, is that it? Oh, all of a sudden it makes sense. You think I had an affair with him and this grand flaming passion is supposed to have put ideas of divorce into my head? Oh, oh, oh fine. Oh, fine. All I know is you were <laughs> held up to get there and then you couldn't wait to get back and then you came back early, as a matter of fact. Immediately asked for your old job back, away from Jack. That's right. Well, what am I supposed to think? You are supposed to think that I love you enough, and respect you enough, and respect myself enough, as a matter of fact, that I wouldn't dream of having an affair with another man. Okay, I find the man attractive. Okay, I have some feelings for him that I can't handle too well at the moment. But an affair. How could you? How could you? Well, I said I had to ask you, and now that I have, I won't bring it up again. Excuse me. Are you Captain Hall? Yes, I am. There's a phone call for you. Will you follow me, please? Yeah, thank you. Hello, Captain Hall. Hi, Ed, it's Vinny. Yeah, Vinny, what's up? I just got a call from Joe. Vicky's in the hospital. What? It seems that when he told her about Nikki's being back and how maybe she killed Marco. She couldn't take it. She collapsed, and when I talked to Joe, she still hadn't come to. Okay, okay, Benny. Thanks for calling me. I'll go over to the hospital as soon as I finish dinner. You want me to come? No, 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 no. Why don't you just have a nice evening with Wanda? Yeah. A nice evening? Yeah, worrying. I'll see you. I have never hated being a cop so much in my life. I had to force myself to tell Ed about Vicky. It's just as fine with me if he never knew where she was. I'd like to take her and Joe in the kitchen and sneak them all out of town. Oh, I'd love to help you do that, but we just can't. It just isn't fair that she has to go through this all over again. Wasn't once enough? I mean, Nikki always swore that she'd come back, that she couldn't be destroyed. Did any of us believe her? Oh, no. She was smarter than any of us. Vicky, even if Nikki could get involved enough with Marco to want to kill him. You know, that's another thing that's not fair. With all those low lives that Marco was involved with, any one of them could have blown him away, and people would have said he probably got what he deserved. Oh, nobody deserves that. But to think that Vicky's life he depends on Marco. Oh, Vicky. You know, if there was some way that we could get Nikki into jail and not Vicky, I, it's hard to get it through your head that it's one person you're dealing with here. You know, I never, I never knew um, Vicky as Nikki, but I just can't imagine it. I mean, Vicky is so nice and so proper and so refined. You just think of the opposite of nice and proper, and you've got Nikki. Honey, I have never seen you so upset about anything. Listen, maybe this will all go away like a bad dream. Maybe it'll turn out somebody else really did kill Marco. Yeah. Maybe.
talk to. Do you know what she's trying to do to me? She's trying to get rid of me. They all are. You too, as far as I know. But honey, I got news for you. It ain't gonna work. Because I'm stronger than she is. And I don't care if she has a little princess and her old man on this dump. But when you get right down to it, it's her or me.
too hard. Just a little too neat. You believe it? Not unlike you, I don't want to believe it. But unless something comes up that proves it's wrong. Hey, is that Vicky or Nikki in that room? Take it easy. It's Vicky. If it's Vicky, then why do you have a cop posted outside the door? Right this way, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. We'll uh, order later. Thank you. Okay, I'm glad I got here early and ran into you. Give us a chance to catch up. Oh, yeah. Say, when Pat gets here, would you two scurry off to a quiet little table in the corner so she can be alone? No, I want to give you two a chance to get to know each other better, but only if you promise to keep your mouth shut. As your friend, haven't I always? You turkey. <laughs> As a doctor, I must keep a patient's confidence. You know that. Uh, you've been awfully adamant these days about forcing the truth out of me. Which you still refuse to give her. I've made a stand with Pat. She knows that there are areas of my life that are not to be pried into, and she's agreed to allow me my privacy. Mm. Then she obviously must trust you. I caught the implications in that, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you sound happy. Yeah, that's important, man. And I'm very happy for you. You, you just don't approve of it. Well, it's just that I'm worried about you. Well, I am doing something you've always wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not running away from a woman because of my problems. Uh, and you must be very much in love. Awfully close to it. This may be the best relationship I've ever had. But what I don't understand, Adam, is that anything meaningful can happen between two people if one of the persons involved is kept in the dark about something that could mean everything. All right, Vinny, just calm down. What do you mean, calm down? You got a guard in front of Vicky's door, like, like she was going to run away or something, like she was a hardened criminal. Vinny, we're trying something here. You see, we're going to keep Vicky under observation for a day or two, and then if this Nikki Smith personality comes out, we'll know about it. If that happens, if Nikki does come out, maybe she'll write a note. That's possible, isn't it? Oh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a test? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but I don't like a guard in front of Vicky's door. Vinny, it's for her own good. Nothing that's going on around here is doing Vicky any good. Oh, 
sounds so totally ideal, Adam, except I wonder, I wonder if you will ever conceive of a time where you just might sit down and quietly, calmly, serenely tell her. Maybe. Oh, fabulous. Now we're making progress. But certainly not now. Oh, why not now? Right now might be the perfect time to sit down and, and bear everything, tell her everything. You know, I know that you think in the past the type of person who would run. But I'm willing to lay you odds, lay you odds, that her reaction would be quite different. I can't take the chance, Jack. What if I should lose her? Then she wouldn't be worth all that grand passion. Now, would she?
Uh, uh, did you eat the same sandwich I did? Because that's really a compliment. Well, Dr. Jensen, I think that I have outstayed my visit. What? You mean it's time for me to go back to the wards? Uh-huh. And I have to leave the class, so... Hmm. No, no, uh, I'm supposed to remind you about Paul Kendall. Uh, I spoke to him yesterday. And he said that there was an article that Dorian wanted written for uh, Pulse magazine about uh, the maestro's return to the States, and he wanted to know whether you had spoken to Weston about it. Oh, uh, well, didn't, didn't I tell you? Tell me what. Well, I, I talked to the maestro, and he said that he was very sorry, but he um, he really doesn't, um, you know, like publicity that much. He, he moved to Philadelphia so that he could live quietly. So it's a definite no. Well, I'm afraid so. He, he, he never cared for it. You know, he does it. He's a very unusual person. Yeah, yeah, he's unusual in a lot of respects, like uh, not charging for his services. Do you know that I haven't gotten a single bill for any of your lessons yet? I've been paying him. With what? Out of my savings. I pay him uh, each time you have a lesson. Hey, I really don't want you to do that. Why not? My career. I, I know, honey, but look, I, I want you to save your money for something really special, like... Um, I don't know, a real knockout gown, maybe, for your first concert. Hey, listen, I'm trying to ingratiate myself to you. See, I figure that, that the time will come and you can be a famous pianist and I can retire from all of this and live off your earnings. Thanks, honey, but I really prefer to pay for my own lessons. Wrong. This time you are overruled. And don't forget how stubborn I can be. From now on, have Weston send the bills to me. Better yet. I'll give him, uh, I'll phone his secretary and, and uh, make the arrangements myself. Can you please? Now, now, Mr. Weston does not like when his work is interrupted by telephone calls. Well, and he's in pretty big trouble, isn't he? I mean, because telephones have this very funny habit of ringing once in a while. I mean, if he doesn't want to get calls, maybe he should have a, an after service or a machine. You don't have to be facetious. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I... Listen, I promise that I, I will arrange it with Mr. Weston this afternoon, okay? Uh, Jenny, who are you? Hello. Hi, ma'am. Hi, Jenny. Uh, you really weren't exactly going to totally ignore us, were you? I certainly was. Doctors and their wives get very little time together, and I wasn't about to interrupt you two. Oh, well, that's good, because for a moment there, I got the impression that you were, um, you were getting a little swell-headed about your, your promotion, trying to maintain a professional distance. <laughs> Come on, Peter, what are you talking about? With my new job, we are going to be working closer than ever before. You just watch, you're going to get bored with me. What, what promotion? Oh, you ready to tell you? No. Well, then, I would like you to meet head nurse Vernon. Jenny's been promoted to head nurse of pediatrics. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Well, Brad must be very proud of you. Well, I just hope I can do the job justice. I, listen, I don't believe you. You're, the two of you are just as must. Do you have any idea that the kind of obstacles she had to deal with, the conditions she had to work under in San Carlos? Not to mention the, uh, the quality of the service that she provided, despite the drawbacks there. Wait a minute, Peter. Would you cut this testimonial? You know, I'm going to expect a gold watch before I even finish my coffee. Okay, okay. Just, I think it's kind of funny the way everything comes full circle. Whatever that means. What it means is that, that three years ago, the two of us worked very closely together way in San Carlos. And now, three years later, just like the song says, together again. Sound as if you listen. No. That part of my life is over now. Don't you miss the, the excitement, the sense of commitment? I think what we did in San Carlos, the work, was very important. But I'm happy with my life now. I am very happy with my life. And you are very late, unless you get into the car right now and head for, for Weston, right down the turnpike. All right. I'm sure you two have a lot to talk about. Jenny, would you try to back for me?